a lovely walk. Oh, it's a shame to take the The First World War, a global military conflict that took place primarily in Europe from August 4, 1914 to November 11, 1918, was characterized by trench warfare, machine guns, barbed wire, shell holes, widespread chemical warfare, and masses of artillery. The war was responsible for the deaths of approximately 9 million people worldwide. When the war started, there were 403 nurses on active duty in the Army. By the war's end, there would be more than 22,000. The all-female Army Nurse Corps existed only for 16 years at the declaration of war. Its members lacked rank or title and were simply referred to as Miss or Nurse. For their own safety, nurses were intended to be located no closer to the front lines than 15 or 20 miles. Lenny Etta Lacrone was born in 1893 at Salem, Illinois. She went to Wesley Hospital School of Nursing, graduating in October 1916. An early volunteer for the Army Nurse Corps, she was activated on November 7, 1917. After only a few weeks of training, Lenny embarked for France, where American troops were being tested on the front lines. The Army realized early on that specialty teams were needed to augment the care delivered at the front-line hospitals where fighting was the heaviest and due to the danger only men were allowed. It was determined that a break in policy assigning nurses to these specialty teams would improve patient outcomes despite the risks. One type of specialty team was known as a shock team. The mission of the shock team was the resuscitation of wounded soldiers who were hypotensive secondary to blood loss usually as a result of a femur fracture or multiple trauma and therefore too ill to survive immediate surgery. Those soldiers suffering from significant hypotension were placed in a segregated area known as a shock ward. Typically, a patient with a blood pressure below 100 systolic was triaged to the shock ward where a team of specially trained physicians, nurses, and enlisted men attempted to stabilize them. The therapies used were primarily warming and intravenous fluids, which included either citrated blood or use of gum solution, a plasma expander. Their efforts predated the type and cross-match of blood products. Occasionally, a patient who deteriorated while undergoing surgery had to be removed from the operating room and transferred to the shock ward to be stabilized before the surgery could resume. On July 29, 1918, an urgent telephone call came. A gas and shock team was to be assembled from base hospital number 66. Lenny and Irene Robar, a friend from Wesley who had joined the Army the same day as Lenny, stepped forward and jumped on a truck to Chateau Thierry. There, shock team 134, composed of two doctors, nurses Lenny and Irene, and two enlisted men, was attached to field hospital number 127 of the 32nd Division. The 32nd was counterattacking the Germans, taking hundreds of casualties per day. As Chateau Thierry was a communications hub for the Allied counterattack, the Germans shelled and bombed it. Linny and Irene did their work under fire and earned the respect of their commander for their bravery. In a letter to her aunt, Linny wrote of that day, our work was with the shock cases, the ones that had lost so much blood. They came in just cold and wet, so that part was depressing after 12 hours straight and then losing about half. But it was sure worth all we put in it to see the few get better. For her bravery that day, Lenny was awarded the Citation Star. It consisted of a small, 3 16 of an inch in diameter, silver star device that was worn on the World War I Victory Medal. Recognition of women for bravery in combat was so infrequent that the clerk who prepared this certificate that recognized her accomplishment simply lined through the male pronouns and inserted female ones in their stead. In 1932, the United States replaced the Citation Star with the Silver Star. Awardees of the Citation Star were eligible to exchange their medals with the Silver Star. Linny never knew of the significance of her award or her eligibility to wear the Silver Star. The orders for Lenny's Citation Star were found by accident in the fall of 2006. After significant research and establishing contact with Lenny's family, the Silver Star Medal was presented to Lenny's daughter by Acting Army Surgeon General Major General Gail S. Pollock in the summer of 2007. Today we recognize Lenny, Irene, 
and fellow World War I nurse Jane Rignall as the first three women eligible to wear the Silver Star Medal. But Linney's contributions go well beyond that of earning medals. It is because of nurses like Linney that the role of women on the battlefield in World War II would not be questioned. Linney proved that nurses could make a difference in morbidity and mortality in the care of battlefield casualties.